Howling 6 The Freaks is a 1991 werewolf movie that is a sequel in name only. For a straight-to-video horror flick, it's an entertaining and decent movie. I want to leave. Why? Everywhere you go, it's the same. Children laugh and old people scream. They point their fingers and yell, Freak. Am I right? No more. Ian is a werewolf drifter who's been trying to track down a man named Harker who runs a traveling carnival. Turns out Harker is the one who cursed Ian and slaughtered his family. Ian eventually catches up to the carnival in a small, dusty town. It turns out Harker runs a freak show and after realizing who Ian really is, wants to use him as his main attraction. Harker is also a vampire and in his possession he has an amulet, which can make Ian turn into a werewolf whenever he wishes. As the disappearances and deaths rack up in the town, Ian and Harker prepare for a werewolf vs. vampire showdown. Keep me here. You can let me go. It doesn't matter. It won't change anything. It won't stop it. Because you're dead. You're dead. I may not know your name. Or your face. Boy. But I know you. <laughs> I know what you are. I know what you need. Howling 6 The Freaks was a horror movie I loved as a kid. It featured a werewolf battling a vampire, had a cool old western feel to it, and the scenes at the carnival were entertaining. It was easily my favorite Howling film. As an adult, I see some of the weaknesses a bit more, such as the made-for-TV cheapness the production gives off, and the pacing issues but the film is still entertaining and miles ahead of any of the sequels that preceded it. I read all about you in those papers of Ian's. Wherever this carny goes, people pop up dead. Now, Mr. Harker, or whatever you call yourself, you're under arrest. I've never argued with a man in a gun. The lead actor, Brandon Hughes, is pretty forgettable in the lead, but does play a likable enough character. The real star of the film was Bruce Payne as the villainous Harker, the vampire carnival owner who enslaves the freaks. He turns in an intense performance and chews up the scenery. No one is ever going to forget you. Long after we're dead, they'll still be telling stories of the amazing alligator. It must suck for a movie to have to feature a transformation scene knowing damn well it can never top the originals. The transformation scene is pretty underwhelming. The werewolf design is kinda lame this time around. It's that awkward wolfman type of design. The special effects overall are okay, and it's obvious the film is working with a limited budget. Teach me the secret I want to change too. Why? <laughs> Look at me, that's why. Leave here, Winston. You don't belong. Some of the acting is downright terrible, especially from the church owner and his daughter. The biggest negative I have about the film, however, is the ending. The film does a nice job telling an interesting enough story and building up excitement for the showdown, but due to budget limitations, the final fight just isn't that good. It's pretty quick and not choreographed well. Howling 6 The Freaks may be a low-budget werewolf flick, but it's an entertaining one and easily the best sequel. It features some interesting freak characters, a cool premise, some touching moments with heart, and an awesome villain and performance by Bruce Payne. It's a sequel worth checking out. Job, I want you to go over there and take care of those banners, all right? The werewolf's escaped! The werewolf's escaped! Where? I thought it was locked up! Oh, no, he's gone! The werewolf's escaped! The werewolf's escaped! Where? 